Well, well, well. It's no secret that I've been a productivity app fan for a long time. It's the entirety of the purpose of this channel. And at this point, you're probably wondering, like, what are my top productivity tools? I talk about a lot of different individual tools by themselves in previous videos on this channel. But in this video, I want to dive into what are my top productivity tools at the moment. So first and foremost, I would say that my number one productivity tool, drum roll please, I'm, I know, you're probably, it's Notion, yeah. So Notion is obviously my number one productivity tool. It's been a undertone of a channel topic for a long time. I've been a huge fan of the product over the last few years. They've released some amazing updates in the last year. Even if you just take a look at some of the recent stuff they've been doing, if you go to their what's new page, you'll see that they have added some AI implementation into the system. They added some automations recently, which I am astounded with. As now, any time that I need to worry about basic automations, I can go inside here and set up some very basic ones that actually augment my major automations in different places like Zapier or Make.com. If you're looking for a product that allows you to take notes, do project management, and even task management, I really do recommend Notion. It's got so many different things that I use in it every day. It manages my entire team, tracks all my invoices and that kind of stuff when it comes to a project management side of it. And I personally just love working inside of it each and every day. The mobile app leaves a little bit to be desired. And this actually brings me to my second app of choice, which is Todoist. Now, I don't really use this on my computer much, but speaking of the mobile version, I actually don't use the mobile version on Notion anymore because I haven't used my phone in a while since I switched to focusing more of my daily life on enjoying it by not having my phone on me and using an Apple Watch instead. Now, due to that reason, I ended up having to switch what I was doing from a task management standpoint for non-computer related tasks like chores and physical things. You know, you can see like this daily task in Todoist called Prep Tomorrow's Coffee gets checked off usually inside of my Apple Watch. Now you may be saying, okay, why are you using Todoist for a habit tracker? I actually think it works very well for something like a habit tracker or a non-computer related task, just like a checklist, right? And I was looking for something that's very basic. I'm not actually sure whether I describe it more than anything of a backlog of tasks that I have to do. You can see on this list pretty clearly, I try to just implement some very basic health stuff as well as some chores on this list. And then I'll just like go to my Todoist on my Apple Watch, check it off as I go throughout the day. Like I Swiffer, I dust, I go on my Apple Watch, check it off, take my vitamins, check it off. All that kind of stuff is very basic. And I think Todoist is amazing. They actually recently released a new calendar view for projects, which to be frank, I'm sure everybody will love. I'm not really gonna get much of use out of because I don't really use it as a to-do list for more in-depth tasks or projects, but I definitely recommend checking out Todoist uh, if you wanna you know, do a quick capture. It's one of the few products that has an amazing quick capture. So I can say, take out the trash tomorrow and then put it in a specific project without even needing to uh, think that hard about it. Put a little priority like p1 or p2 whatever it is it's it just so quick and easy I, I love the product i really recommend that you check it out now number three is morgan uh there's actually been some controversy in some recent videos about you know like what apps does dimitri use regarding calendar apps uh, there's a consistent trend on the channel where i'll review a non-calendar uh, an app that's not morgan right and then people will be like why are you reviewing apps that aren't the app that you mainly use? I just have to not have an aneurysm. And uh, that's usually from people who don't consistently watch the channel. It's totally fine. But generally speaking, if you're looking for a product that has booking page capabilities, task capabilities, an automated system for adding workflows and reorganizing your calendar, I would definitely recommend checking it out. I'm also pretty close with the product there because I do make videos on their YouTube channel. Similar to what I do with a lot of other companies. So if you are looking for your specific product to have content created around it, check us out at riseproductive.com slash content services. We have a bit of an agency there that is doing its thing on content creation for software and service products. But enough of a shameless plug. I really do like this product. It aggregates all of my different calendars across like four different Google accounts. Now, the, the fact of the matter is, as well as really nice to have these kinds of tools, the emphasis I wanna put here is on the fact that it not only has a Google integration, but it works with Microsoft. Booking links are amazing. A lot of different products don't have that. I would say if you are using Cron, 
The only argument I'd make for Morgan is that it has tasks implemented in it, and it also has more integrations across things that aren't just the Google suite. Now next, I wanna talk about my browser. Uh, a lot of people will notice if you look right here that I'm actually using Edge, and that might give people a, a minor cardiac dysarrhythmia, aka heart attack. You know, I made videos on this. Please check out the video I made on why Edge is actually pretty dang good, if not better than other browsing apps. It's accidentally the best thing now because Google Chrome got too bloated, and all you need to do is like turn off a lot of the basic software things inside of your edge. What I mean by that is there's a fair amount of over the top sort of things and settings like this sidebar. If you'll notice, like mine's pretty pared down. I don't have a lot of things on the sidebar anymore. I removed a lot of it. All you have to do is go through like an hour of work and Chrome ends up becoming the most efficient product that you'll have here. You don't need an extension for tabs to auto hide. You don't need nearly anything. I mean, this kind of functionality where you can, you know, hover over an image, right? And maybe do a visual search related to it, or even just easily save it based off that. You have the ability to read the page as if it was, if I highlight here and do read aloud selection, this is as if it was Speechify. Like, what are we, what are we even talking about? This, this, so, this is like ridiculously functional. And all you gotta do is remove some of it. Obviously it all, so has the co-pilot, Bing chat implemented into it. That goes without saying. And recently they have kind of done some pre-built things that are interesting, like bookmark all current tabs. And the things that are kind of connected to with the send my browsing data to Microsoft, pretty interesting because you can see right here, it's gonna generate a page summary of what I'm dealing with. And not only that, but as much as it can do that, it already comes functional with like an insights page right, to showcase the key phrases and some of the things about the traffic on this page, where a lot of the traffic's coming from, all that kind of stuff. Now, the last but not least really cool tool that I like in my productivity workflow is actually called CleanShot. So if I were to take something inside of my Notion UI, right, I find something in here that makes sense to take a screenshot of and I want to kind of showcase it to somebody, what I would do is I would press Control Shift 4 capture some tasks here as an example. And then you'll notice that this is in a different layout than the norm for screenshots. And all I gotta do is click on one of these and it essentially adds a padded background, uh, which looks really nice. I use my Mac a lot more than my desktop anymore. I really like it. I might even get a Mac mini because I don't wanna waste the battery on my <laughs> MacBook Pro. And you can add these different wallpapers. They can be custom. This is like a branded one for RP. and. You can also blur the background, but you can adjust the padding here. Kind of, uh, it's kind of cool to see the different ways that people utilize this. When you see a screenshot from CleanShot, you'll notice that the degradation is minimal. There's, it's actually probably just taking the exact quality of it from what I've noticed. You can add arrows here. You can add a bunch of different symbols, type things out. And then when you're done with it, you can press done. And I've preset mine to copy it, uh, but also you can press save. And a really quick tip for anybody who's wondering, when it comes to products like CleanShot, all you gotta do is if you have a Google Drive, get Google Drive for desktop, and then put something like your Mac screenshots inside of this folder and then make a habit of, you know, when you press save, just making sure that everything's all good. And I do really recommend that you do that because in order to prevent it from going like wild on your storage, you can just like press remove downloads. And then from there, you pretty much have a free cloud storage solution Whereas CleanShot X is a one-time purchase. If you wanna get like the cloud, you have to pay a monthly subscription. And that's ridiculous. You should not do that for any of these kind of products. All you gotta do is save it to a Google Drive for desktop folder. And that's why with that or with a OneDrive implemented into your system, you're gonna get a much cleaner experience when it comes to cloud storage solutions. And I really recommend that you actually get Google Drive for desktop as well. The one issue that does come up is it ends up taking a lot of your storage on your desktop unless you remove the downloads after they're uploaded. Uh, that only comes to be a problem for me when I upload stuff from my big SD card. And for the average person, if you have good storage, it's uh, something you're not gonna have to worry about too often. But I love the way that this works. I can essentially navigate through the entirety of my system in Google Drive and kind of take a look here and see uh, that I even have some pinned shortcuts here, like for all these videos that I'm recording in batch right now. I can go here, move stuff to there for my editors to get, 
and make it a really easy process for them to edit the content later. So those are my main productivity tools that I really like. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to stick around for more content on how to improve your skills using productivity tools even more.